Hello everyone and welcome back to Around the World in 80 Planes and this flight will be in a Landcare Legacy Fixed Gear FG and it is freeware and it's pretty good freeware it looks good and we've got an orange uh, livery here and we are going to be continuing the Apollo 12 audio picking up from uh, just after they did Translunar Injection so I'm gonna start playing that and we will proceed with the flight from Detroit to Toronto, which should be pretty quick. Of course, it'll take this plane about an hour to do it. So here we go. Uh, brakes off. Uh, okay, must steer. <laughs> Altitude now is 1,987 nautical miles. Velocity 28,872 uh, feet per sorry, a second. little bit squirrely here. I sort of like the Lancare Legacy retractable gear. It's a pretty nifty looking plane. And quick. This is not going to be as quick, obviously. We gotta try and fly by Detroit. <laughs> the city center, I mean. We're taking off from the metro airport. You can see the city center there. Booster engineer reports the S-4B has started maneuvering to the separation attitude. Okay, so the third stage of the Saturn V rocket is turning. Apollo 12 is 2,222 <laughs> nautical miles from the Earth now. In preparation for them separating from it. Feet per second. And then they're going to have to redock. They're going to have to dock with the lunar module and pull it out. Apollo 12, Houston, uh, give us Omni Charlie, please. We're following uh, Interstate 94 here. Reports the maneuver to separation attitude is complete. We asked the crew to change Omnis. Uh, during this maneuver, we got intermittent data dropouts as the antenna patterns changed. We have data back. Distance from Earth, 29,041 nautical miles, 2,941 nautical miles. Velocity, 26,571 feet per second. So compared to the Harrier, this should provide a more... We're on a timeline. We'll be stepping at 318. A better sightseeing experience. the ice situation on your windows now. We've got awful bad windows. It's a shame because it's all the water that was on them, and it looks like it'll be with us for the flight. Bad news, Pete. And that's because of the weather. Maybe I'll get out and clean them later. Because they flew through those clouds and all, and uh, picked up the ice, and nothing's gonna warm them. Well, I mean, perhaps during PTC, the warm up, clear up. That's passive thermal control, and so they'll they'll probably have the windows pointing at the sun for a bit, for a time being. I don't know. They're probably pointed away. You can see some trains down there. Lots of trains, actually. Apollo 12 is three and a half minutes away from the separation. Got to check where the red line on this is. Distance from Earth, 3,218 nautical miles. Velocity, 25,996 we look okay. feet per second. At this speed, we should get to Toronto in an hour. Uh, 
Houston, pyro arm. Roger, 12. One minute in separation. I believe these are Ford facilities. And that uh, at my left wing is Dearborn, Michigan. Famous for car manufacturing. Fifteen seconds. Across the channel, river, what you want to call it, uh, to our right is Windsor, Ontario. And of course, Detroit is coming up ahead. The nice suspension bridge we, we see here separation. is Ambassador Bridge. We copy slaw set, Pete. Okay, we stepped. Oh, I thought I had my... I have my... Oh. Um, we have a problem. I retracted my flaps. I thought. They looked retracted and I had it uh, parented to... Uh, to uh, Axis. I should have probably verified that, though. Let me go inside the cockpit for a second. Altitude set. at separation was about 3,800 nautical miles. Um... Uh, well, now it, it's gonna list to the left, it looks like. I'm gonna use some aileron trim to compensate for that. We'll continue. Um, yeah, I'm a little bit peeved at the simulator. Booster engineer reports the S4. It should stage. read my axes nice stable, properly. Good. Anyway, downtown Detroit. Looking good. Bad at all. Uh, ground textures could use a higher resolution, to be honest. We can see the whole United States, Houston. Roger. Give us Omni Bravo, please. And just to note, uh, Omni means the antennae. That was Al Bean reporting he could see the United States. And there are four Omni antennae, and then the high gain antenna. Command and service modules are now maneuvering into the docking attitude. I got an awful pretty looking intrepid sitting out the window here, gang. We'll go get her. The intrepid Roger. is the lunar module. And Pete Conrad has seen the lunar module intrepid. If I recall, the command module is the Yankee Clipper for this mission. I think I should climb a little bit further. I do have uh, random failures on, but the meantime before failure is like 10,000 hours. So the probability of us getting one of those is slim. That said, uh, recently I had uh, a random failure on an aileron trim. Basically, it was flapping around, so causing 12, random Houston, rolls. Manageable, but uh, you know it wasn't as bad as a full aileron going bad. Apollo but, 12 is in docking attitude now. But that was interesting. I think that was the first time I had a random failure actually happen. You can activate all sorts of failures in in X-Plane 11. 
pretty useful for that sort of thing. So here we are passing by Tecumseh, Ontario, and then we are approaching Lakeshore, or the appropriately named. You can see it still wants to roll to the left here. Distance from Earth now 4,500 nautical miles. Because Velocity, of the flat issue. Feet per second. One thing I wonder is if the flaps have an overextension, and that's why. I mean, I can't really tell from this flap lever. Oh, well, it says here. No, it uh, tops out at zero. Hmm. And I, my, my flap axis is where it was, and it looks to have been up, so I don't understand. Un unless it was a random failure. But I doubt We're that. Set up it said overspeed. Control center to receive TV. To our scheduled for about five minutes from now. To our left is Lake Saint Clair. I'm gonna pass up a message on the TV to him. I think now. And follow 12 Houston. We're configured for television early. If you want to punch it out. Why don't we follow the 401 all the way? It up right now. Good show. 401 goes all the way to Toronto, and it's the highway to our right. I haven't found the TV recordings for Apollo 12. Don't know if people still have those. Probably, and if they do, they're probably trying to sell it, but uh, I don't think... No, NASA is pretty bad about the point. TV no, transmissions. Yet. They recorded other stuff like this audio. Nothing yet, Pete. And they wanted the 16 millimeter recordings from the crew, which were, of course, much better. You know, and I have that. Pictures coming in now. They should be uh, converted into color very shortly. The 16 millimeter video that the crew took, um, they took about an uh, hour and 20 minutes of it, and it's like a 4 gig file. It's pretty high quality, and of course, that was of much more importance than a TV <laughs> transmission, as far as NASA was concerned. Still nothing, 12. Science wise. Okay, stand by. I think we got it coming. Huh? Still nothing, 12. Okay, stand by. I think we got it coming. Okay, they're, they're playing the tape, and that's why we've got this delay. All right. Twelve, Houston, and we got the TV now. It looks very good. So there's the audio from the TV transmission. Oh, we have not quite as much uh, visibility as we once did, looks like. Oh, the flickering. That happens. Too. I sometimes turning this off and saying, eh, let's just turn it off for the time being. I don't think it's necessary. The other option is to go higher. We're not going very fast anymore. Apollo 12 moving into dock with the lunar module. Wind's not going to help. Who's that? The mixture doesn't seem fully... Huh, that's weird. Well, that might have been a problem. We don't need the RPM in the red zone. There we go. Better. I think 
we just saw yeah, you. Yeah, okay, it's reading the mixture control right lever right now. a little bit incorrectly. Guess I'll just manually do it. Houston, she looks good. Both Barber, I mean, both uh, A and B are gray. All latches made. Roger, P. Looks good. So they've docked with the lunar module now. Got to try and get high enough so we don't have this flickering. That only happens at low altitude when there's a lot of clouds. Lots of wind turbines around here. Apollo 12, Houston, uh, if you're going to leave oh. the camera there for a few minutes more, uh, try an F-11 stop. That's where we are now, Houston. Roger. I'll try a little more for you. Perfect. We can see the scribe marks on the window now on a color TV. Roger. We can see the red window sill, the ridge around the window. Okay, we're going to move the camera now. Roger. Down in front of us is Tilbury. We're going a bit slower now, so it's going to take more than an hour. Unless we can pick it up a bit. Distance now 6,000 miles from Earth. Velocity 21. I think I've got the best mix for this altitude. I, I feel like it tops out about here. And there's the Earth. Wow, I mean, anyway, I'm not going to focus on the flap issue, it's not going to do it. I think maybe our limited speed might be partly because of the flap issue. Even though it's not showing a broken flap, it's having an effect on our aerodynamics. Oh, flickery. Houston, uh, we're picking up your earth shot now. It's still moving a little bit. Roger, we'll work on it. Uh, 
Well, Houston, uh, we've got a real good view now. Definitely doing worse there. Uh, Apollo 12, Houston, uh, were the LEM docking lights on? Uh, this is 12. Uh, I didn't notice whether they were on or not. I have my, have my eyes glued to the uh, docking target. Roger. Well, that's a better view. We're at about 6,000 hey, feet. Dick, how much fuel did I waste during that docking? Hang tight, Dick. We'll check. Uh, 12 Houston, uh, you were nominal. You used 70 pounds. That's too much. That's too much. Uh, the astronauts competed to see who could use the least on maneuvers like that. And also, uh, the command module pilot, which uh, Gordon is, of course, uh, has an incentive to use as little as possible on the necessary maneuvers, because while the other oh, two are on the ground... Uh, we're having a little trouble recognizing things there. How about giving us a little travelog? Well, that's the Earth you're looking at, friend. Oh, I thought it was the moon. <laughs> uh, Charlie's not working again, is he? That's an Apollo 11 oh, joke. Oh, got him locked in a closet. Okay, you should be looking at the Yucatan Peninsula, Mexico, Baja, California, in plain sight. It's a pretty nice day down there. Uh, the Gulf, the western Gulf of Mexico, uh, has a cloud coverage along the coast. Looks like it's almost uh, up to Houston and south and west of it. Roger. It looks like that garbage we came through down at the Cape is off the coast at this time. Gee, you could have waited and missed it, Dick. <laughs> oh, I wouldn't have missed that for the world. Yeah, so the command module pilot is going to be stuck in orbit around the moon, right? While the other two That's go to the surface. Giving the description of the Earth. And the command module pilot is also responsible for all the maneuvers with the command and service module. Uh, so he has an incentive to keep the fuel consumption to a minimum because while they're down there he's going to be trying to get pictures and otherwise maneuvering the command module to do uh, his uh, part well, of the science. Have you got your lens zoomed? And the more fuel he saves on the That's necessary fine. maneuvers Okay, why don't you try it backing off on it and let us see a little bit more now. The more he can use on his interesting bit while the other two are down on the surface. Oh, the flickering. We're flying over Chatham. Uh, that's that town in front here. Looks like you zoomed it in closer rather than back that time. Wonder if it's any better just going down at this point. river that flows through Chatham is the Thames River, uh, though the obviously not the famous astronaut one. Jerry Carr, astronaut Dave Scott, the backup commander, uh, still sitting next to Jerry at the console. Okay, 12, now we can see the Earth is indeed round. <laughs> Hey, Jared, it's a fantastic sight. Uh, the Mississippi Valley has a uh, little bit of cloud coverage coming down from Canada, and there's some in the no uh, northeast part of the country, uh, up in the New England states. Looks like there may be some snow here in the next day or two. Uh, Florida is cut in half with that uh, front that went through this morning. West Coast looks absolutely gorgeous. Baja, California is clear. 
looks like the San Diego, Los Angeles area to the south and west of, of them is uh, a little cloud covering, covered. I won't say anything about smog. Roger, you see any more dry fronts anywhere? Hey, that was that was uh, one of the driest ones I've seen in a long time. I hope I never see another one like it. Well, look up north. Uh, there's nothing but clouds up there. Apollo 12 is 7,225 nautical miles from Earth now. Yeah, the Earth really pulls away fast, and then on the way back, it takes forever to seem like it's coming toward uh, that you're coming towards it. Uh, from my Apollo 11 video, seems to be tiny for an extended period of time, and then suddenly, right at the end, maybe in the last few hours, then it grows. Then, then it's obvious that uh, you're really coming towards it quickly. Uh, Apollo 12 Houston, uh, now with your zoomer, how about sliding in about halfway between where you are now and where you were before? Okey up. It's funny, we see the moon uh, out the right window here, window number five. Looks like about one quarter. We see the Earth out the left window. Roger. Good right there. We've seemed to have a persistent the yaw as well. The lunar module now. I don't have uh, rudder trim on anything. Hey Jerry, I'm gonna take the camera out of that left window out the earth. I gotta get to work and get this thing pressurized. Might need to change okay, that. Okay, Dick. Around here is only uh, level 15, zoom level 15 photo scenery, you can tell. It would be better if I fly a little bit higher up. Roger, your signal strength uh, looks a little low. Are you on the high gain? That's first. Good, Al. Looks like uh, signal strength bumped up pretty well. The signal strength is not only the audio, of course, there's also the data from the spacecraft coming down. Apollo 12, Houston, uh, what are your plans with the TV now? We'll get with you in just a few minutes. We're repressing the limb right now. Okay. Surprised they wanted uh, TV so quickly. And they've already gotten some. Uh, with Apollo 11, I think the first transmission... They, they intended to do a transmission around the Earth. 
before they did TLI, but they didn't get to it. And uh, the first actual transmission was 10 hours into the mission. We're not quite Auto there yet here. The distance now is 8,030 nautical miles. Velocity 19,594 feet per second. We're at three hours, 43 minutes elapsed time into the mission. We're more following the river than uh, following 401 right now, but both end up uh, flowing into London. Crew is busy now. <laughs> appropriately enough, module. but London, Ontario, Getting of course. It ready to remove from uh, the adapter in which it was launched. Looks as if they're moving the TV camera around some now. Apollo 12, Houston, uh, we can see a handrail there now. Roger, we're back at the limb uh, window. We thought you are probably uh, tired looking at yourself. Roger, still a little bit of that white stuff floating up, isn't there? Yeah, there's quite a bit of it still uh, still around us. Little grid sort of town here called Bothwell. You're chopping on the box. Yeah, how's that now? Sounds pretty good now. Keep talking. Okay, I'm going up in a tunnel at this time. What'd you put on about seven? This is between the and CSM and LEM. I don't see any bad latches so far. Looks like everything banked home. Are they all parallel? All parallel. Let me check them all. Just a minute. Hello there. Hey, Houston, Houston, that was a real good ripple fire when they uh, went home. Roger. Those. That's all good. We need a docking probe is hot. Oops, there's the latches. Not made. And now it is. Just the handle. Just bang the handle. Oh, just the handle. That okay. Was good. Okay. No you go problem. around one to twelve. Checking me all. Okay. Now well, let's go hook up some lumb umbilicals. Let me do a three sixty up here. Don't lose them up through the uh no, sir. probe. Just hey, up. twelve, good. Houston. Go. Uh, how about stopping the camera down? Uh, there was a light spot we're kind of worried about. And yeah, that was there, the last light. Yeah. I know, I mean, it may mean on the limb. We can take it out of the window if you like, or turn it off, Houston. Verify extend latched, engaged, indicator red, not this. Ho, ho, ho. There's one umbilical all hooked up. Uh, 12, you can go ahead and turn it off if you want to. 
could uh, look up there. Cal Bean's reading something to you. I don't know what the hell he's reading or what he's reading right now. What you read now? A little bit. Here, let You're me break it up now. Okay. You gotta put up to about seven. Cal, hold on to this hatch. Okay, good right. boy. Hang on to the hatch. Now let me go after the other umbilical. I thought you were hanging onto the hatch. I got it. Are you talking to me? No, I'm getting the other umbilical and we'll okay. be all set. Just a minute. Let me turn on a tunnel light, but you got enough in there. You already got lots of umbilical hair. Oh, boy. This is so much nicer than one G practice. I can't believe it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, getting through the tunnel in one G would be horrible. Um, but with zero G, it's much easier. Okay. Now that looks like two umbilicals all connected to me. And let me smoke over these latches one more time here. Want to check the top of each one of the springs? They're all good. Okay. Yeah. One one latch number eleven is a half cock. I mean a half load. Did you read that, Houston? Roger, Pete. We read it. Match number nine is a half. Number nine. Match number seven is a half. Roger. Nothing wrong with that, I guess. Nope. All the rest of them are full. I guess before we uh, put the, the hatch back up there, Dickie, we want to get on the lamp tower? Yes, we do. Go okay. to 4D. It's on 4D. I'll reset okay. it here. And I'm going to CSM. Okay. It should read half to three two grand where we are, CSM. Oh, we got power on the CSM, not very much. I mean on the lamp. Well, let's go half a volt to three point two. Okay, it's reading a half. Three point four tenths. This is Glencoe, okay. Ontario. What are you looking at on your telemetry? Does that look like we got everything hooked up? Looks good, Pete. Okay. Here it goes up to three volts. Just okay. cycled. Just cycled, huh? Just had a cycle on it. Very good. And drop to one point four. Okay, now it looks to me like we can put the hatch back in. Can be okay. the old friendly hatch. I'll stick her back up in there. Okay, let's uh, let's miss those hoses this time. Get back there. a little easier. Also, these switches, switches would be nice to miss them. All right, wait a minute. I'm not in a very good position for you to hand me the hatch yet. Wait, let me get a hammer that we are in box. Yeah. Okay. Now, I want to get it right. The arrow is in the wrong direction. Rotate my way, gang. Do you see an arrow? And then I'll, I'll go on up in here. Okay, which color arrow do you want? There's yellow. Well, the red. yellow. Yellow's over right at me right, right now. Wait a minute. Let me just cock her around here. Now, there's a hose over on your side that's holding the stick. Can you nice. get that clear? And I'll go yeah. right up into the tunnel with it. Well, you ought to go up the tunnel first. Like All right. right. I'm in there. I'm in there. I'll turn it. There you go. All right. Now, there. where's my yellow arrow? There's your red one right there. Yeah. All right. Just a minute. Ho, ho. Just a reminder that they're not too sure that the LEM is fully functional right now because of the lightning. So they will be wanting to get in there sooner rather than later. Much sooner than Apollo 11 did. First thing I gotta do here, wait a minute. Go to on latch. Go to latch. Yeah, not on latch. I know, just a second. I think everything's in place here, wait a minute. Uh, control, rotate it more. You're not lined up. Not Keep lined rotating. Up. Okay. There you go. I'll buy that one right there. You'll buy that one right there. Yeah. Let me go to maybe just the left. Latch. Okay. That looks like it's home. Does that look like it's home to you? I only go one time. Looks like it to me. Okay. All right, let me close the vent valve. Oh, and, uh, cloud. The lights and we're All right, let's go for the checklist there. You got the checklist? What do we My uh, warm little hand. Okay. Says, uh, vent valve closed. Handle is latched. Oh, and uh, I can verify that all the so. pieces of the... Pressure equalization valve closed clockwise. It's a dead pressure equalization. Left tunnel vent valve, lamp CM delta P. Lamp CM delta P. And the tunnel lights are off. Tunnel lights are out. In this case, it doesn't read zero. Read about uh, plus a tenth when we get the pressure equalized. Apollo 12, Houston. Let's go. We need your O2 fans on, and we'll watch them for you and tell you when to turn them off. Okay, sir. I guess the next thing is we want to get the surge tank and all our uh, repress packages back up. World is uh, 
All that red stuff out That's there. That's just what I was wondering. It's real pink out there. Yeah. Well, let me look and see. Houston 12, what's going on with the booster? All pink out there. Yeah, something this looks like it's blowing. Looks like you're getting a fuel vent. Huh? It's a normal that, fuel vent. Hey, that dream is spectacular. Oh, no, I'll tell you what it is. The sun is on the, uh, on the on our right side, and, uh, and it's shining around the booster, and it's shining through the, the fuel vent. vent, and it's made a rainbow. It's really spectacular. Look at it. Yeah, I see the apex of, of <laughs> yeah. where it all comes together. Out they're all, they're always seeing yeah. something out the window. The shut off or something. Still a little bit up this way. There's all kinds of things going Look on at all back there. Loose objects floating along so what's there. happening is the liquid oxygen in the stage and the liquid hydrogen boil off and get released. I think it's probably the liquid hydrogen in this case because the liquid oxygen is reserved for the avoidance maneuver later on. Back to business. Tunnel vent lights off. Okay. You want to go off box? Yep. Uh, Houston, uh, we're going to leave you on off a of box for a while. We'll be back with you a little later. Okay, Dick. And we're standing by here for uh, our SEP time. What do uh, you have for us for the SEP time? Stand by, 12. Famously, in one in the tape 12, that's Houston, missing, we're looking at a set time of 4:13. They see something glinting that isn't the S4B stage, and right, I think set time of 4:13. I think that was probably just a fairing because uh, the S4B had four pedal fairings, but those didn't go along with uh, the avoidance maneuver. When the S4B does its avoidance maneuver, it doesn't have those fairings anymore. The fairings are still basically That's in the, the same... Time, lunar module will be ejected from the spacecraft LAM adapter. Four hours, 13 minutes. We're at an elapsed time of four hours now. The uh, fairings the on the S4... Distance from Earth, 10,730 nautical miles. Velocity, 17,520 feet per second. The fairings on the S4 will be basically stay, stay in the same trajectory that the spacecraft is going in. Uh, they're a little bit off, but uh, they would be relatively closer to the spacecraft than the S4B stage itself, since the S4B stage does this do a maneuver to avoid it. Continue to stay up, stay up live. The uh, crew has gone off the voice-operated circuit mode, in which we could hear them talking uh, back and forth to each other. However, we still are in uh, contact with them. We could get conversation between. Uh, on the ground at any time, so we'll stay up. Highway we're crossing is the 402. We're about 11 minutes away from lamb ejection. And we're approaching London, Ontario. Houston, we're going to bring the uh, Six Logic on. Roger, 12. We're all ready. Logic 1, Mark. Logic 2, Mark. Whenever they're arming one of these logic things, uh, what it is is they're getting ready to do a separation or an ignition. Twelve, Houston, you go for pyros. Pyro right, you go for pyro alarm. given Apollo 12 a go to, to arm the pyrotechnics that will cut loose the attach points of the uh, lunar module and uh, in springs will eject the lunar module from the slaw. Well, Houston, go for ejection. Roger. now has a go for ejection of the limb that's scheduled for four hours 13 minutes we're at four hours nine minutes
so, London, Ontario. Twelve minutes after ejection, the S-4B will perform a, an evasive maneuver using its auxiliary propulsion system. Uh, about a ten foot per second maneuver. Uh, essentially retrograde. We'll have a slight out of plane component to the west. Apollo 12 needed a little bit more energy to do the pass behind the moon that's a free return-ish trajectory. And so the S-4B is going to go the other way around the moon, so it needs to slow down a bit. And then it'll go around the moon in the direction where it would be flung out into interplanetary space. Got a nice little uh, tower here. Let's see, is that on the map? Okay, Houston, you want us to set at 4 plus 13 plus 0, 0, is that correct? That's affirmative, 12. It's like a mini CN tower, <laughs> at least it's going to feel that way. There's downtown London, Ontario. Houston, this is 12. We're having all kinds of time with this, uh, trouble with this mission uh, timer. We've got to reset that thing twice already. Very yeah, good the looking. The timer and the LED is okay. It's kept good time, so uh, we keep getting our little pitchfork. And uh, I just think that uh, we're going to have a lot of trouble with it. So we're just not going to pay much attention to it. Roger, Pete. There goes Pete's EMI theory. Say again, Houston? There goes your EMI theory, Pete. Yeah, I'm afraid you're right. EMI is electromagnetic interference. Apparently the beast used to. Okay, we're standing by. Okay, we are reacquiring the 401. We've set Houston, it looked good, and uh, of course you still can't see anything yet. We'll catch you around, I'll show it to you. Roger, 12. And there it is. Apollo 12, Houston, uh, we don't have our TV ground lines up at this time. Uh, if we don't get them up in time to see the pictures, we'll record it at Goldstone and show it later. Roger. That was Al Bean reporting separation on time. Apollo 12, Houston, uh, we're copying television now, and uh, as soon as you're finished with your ejection and you're clear, we'll go ahead and uh, enable the S-4B evasive maneuver. Well, 
We do have the lines back up, and we are getting a picture now. Uh, it'd be super if we could see the picture, but uh, anyway, there's a pretty enough picture as it is. Though, to be honest, seeing the S4B uh, hang out above the Earth after they've separated is a pretty nice picture. The TV resolution, though, would be pretty crappy, though. That's the uh, RCS thrusters uh, reflecting off the quads on the limb. Roger. You see some traffic We're down there? A, uh, black and white picture, but uh, we have not yet gotten color conversion. Haven't seen any flashes yet, 12. Hey, it may be a little dim for you to see. I feel like I've seen this sort of formation of blue streaks around before, but I don't know what it is. Oh, there's the S4B, and I can see it bending. Uh, Roger, 12. Uh, when you're well clear and you're ready for us, let us know, and we'll start the maneuver to the uh, evasive attitude. Boy, is that thing venting? Let's it keep venting anyhow, Houston. Come on. <laughs> keep throwing we're out big clouds and stuff. Roger, we're not supposed to be venting anything. Boy, it's throwing stuff off the sides and out the back like crazy. I'm sure it's still liquid hydrogen, though. Roger, uh, can you get us a picture? We'll, we'll get you something on the TV if we can. It's just, uh, looks like it's venting something out of the rear end. Oh, uh, rear end. Big radio clouds of it Oxygen coming out the back. Then? That's really something. You probably got a better idea than I do on that one. Can you see that thing throwing stuff out the back, Houston? We could a while ago, and it looks like it's got a halo around it now. Is it still there? Well, that's the sun shining in the front end. But uh, from the angle that we have on it, there's something fitting out the... The, the apse engines are on either side, and the upper apse engine, the engine that's away from the Earth... Uh, no, I'm not talking about that. I'm trying to reference them to whatever it is that's fitting back there. It's a line. See that line coming out of the engine? Over on the left hand side. Uh, 12 Houston, we got a hunch that what happened is when that locks valve uh, failed open and we tried to close it ourselves, uh, it probably burned out the burner. Maneuver's complete, 12. Okay, right, and when are you going to make the apps? Oh, hey, it just vented something tremendously. Can you see that, Houston? Yeah, we can see it now, Pete. Okay, uh, again. Houston, are you going to make that maneuver on time at 1140? Again. Houston, are you going to make that maneuver on time at 1140? Houston, uh, we're looking at 426 plus 18 for that burn. Roger, 426 plus 18. Initially, I thought I heard them say that they had made the maneuver, but I think that means they had programmed in the maneuver. And uh, Houston, uh, that uh, I assume is 1140 after our step, is that correct? Uh, we're checking, 12.
the town coming up here is Woodstock, Ontario. Yes, and we're changing the scenery on you. We'll come back to that S4B just before it goes. Roger, 12, and uh, that maneuver will be done at uh, 13 minutes past that. All right, Roger, I've got 952 right now. How does the homeland look to you? Beginning to look kind of small. It's really weird, Houston. There's something that's venting radially, <laughs> and then there's something that's venting along the axial axis, and it's sort of taking turns. And uh, right now, it reminds me of some guy standing back there with a water hose, just spraying it in any old direction. It's just, it keeps venting, whatever it is, and it just keeps blowing away in different directions. Well, you can understand why he might be concerned. Because after all, they haven't I'm made the they haven't made the maneuver yet, so all this venting could push the S4B towards the spacecraft too. As long as it's venting something, that thing could be could give it a net thrust, depending on what it is. If it's some sort of failed valve, like they're thinking, maybe. Well, Houston, on your event timer, that maneuver will be uh, 12:48. Okay, I understand. 12.48. So, Woodstock. And there's the branch off between the 401 and the 403. 403 ultimately, uh, I think, goes down to Niagara Falls. Or at least uh, heads down to Hamilton and meets up with a road that goes to Niagara Falls, but we're taking the 401. Again, this is a freeware plane. Not bad. Um, Distance is 14,252 nautical miles from Earth. Velocity 15,552 feet per second. It's often the case that freeware planes, uh, the virtual cockpit ain't that great, but this one is very good. I love seeing the traffic on the roadways. Number one reason why I like to follow them. I have to fly low enough for them to appear though. 
And again, with uh, zoom level 15 on the photo scenery, uh, that's 12, Houston. Now not great. Chance, turn off your O2 fans. Roger, they're coming off. Houston, the app maneuver is complete. How much you figure you got out of that, Houston? About 10 feet per second, Dick. Yeah, that's pretty planned. Did you really get that? <laughs> Questioning their word. Houston, the burn was nominal. Uh, if the vehicle was a shade lighter, we might have gotten just a little bit more Delta V out of it. Okay, well, that thing did a fantastic job for us today. Sure did. Worth remembering that the Saturn V instrument unit is at the top of the S4B as well, so. The fact that it stayed all right through the lightning strike is certainly uh, positive in its favor, despite whatever the heck it's venting at the moment. Uh, Houston, uh, the sunlight is starting to come in the window, and we're a little concerned about the TV, so I guess you've uh, seen the show for today on the S4B, and we'll look at the Earth for a little bit for you. Roger, Dick, and we'd sure like to see what you guys look like. Well, we look just like we did this morning when we got out of bed. <laughs> yeah, there's a real reasonable guy for you. But we'll be glad to show you, and give me an attitude to go to. Uh, I'm not going to track that S4B anymore. Roger, 12, uh, good attitude is roll, 5, 8, pitch, 2, 4, 0. Yaw, 3-9-er. All uh, right, the reason I'll leave that S4B is starting to get in line with the sun, and I can still have it, but it's a little tough. Uh, Roger, Dick, this attitude we just fired to you is uh, your P-52 attitude for uh, 05 plus 30. And uh, the stars that you can use at this attitude are number 12, Rigel, number 16, Procyon. And uh, the reason why we had this one in our hip pocket is that uh, this is the same attitude that you could use for the section calibration after you... Oh, we lost it. But anyway, you can tell what they were talking about from context, but in general... If this thing shake, rattles, and roll when you fire in thrusters, it's like being on a jerky train. It was Roger. just, uh, I think there was a minute of audio okay, lost there. Okay, degrees and roll, 240 pitch and 39 degrees and yaw. Roger, 12. We're not getting your TV. The P oh, fifty a good picture here on our monitor. The P fifty two always involves them trying to figure out their orientation with respect to the stars. So that's what that's all about, and we'll hear a lot about that. Uh twelve Houston on the high gain, give us pitch minus five zero and yaw plus six zero, and that should uh, lock us up. Okay, we got your TV. Picture coming in. So we're approaching Cambridge, Ontario, and uh, to our distant left is Kitchener, Ontario. Dr. Gordon, I and Waterloo as well. Kitchener and Waterloo are pretty close together. Dr. Gordon, I presume. Better known to his friends as Tricky Dicky. Hey, Red Baron, where's your scarf? Well, 
I tell you, I think I forgot it during that boost phase. We ought to talk to you about all that good happening. That's a terrible way to break Albine into space flight, I'll tell you. <laughs> Roger. I'm trying to find a camera angle that doesn't Say, involve us uh, flashing. Is the uh, locks blow down on the uh, S4B? Stand by, 12. Well, Houston, Chris says he doesn't think you guys are the same age as when you got up this morning either. He is absolutely correct. In fact, I wish you guys play us that DSE tape back tonight. <laughs> All LP kept saying was, there's power on the buses, there's power on the buses. And every light the right hand side was lit. I kept thinking, why is he saying that to me? Uh, he was saying, there's power on the buses. Oh, that's beautiful. <laughs> I say, now there's so many lights on, I can't read them all to you. <laughs> See, he's totally recovered from lunch. See that? Oh, he looks beautiful. That's a nice looking hat you're wearing, Al. See, we got three up just to like it here. <laughs> and we got something else for you, too. This is all Cambridge. Modules a good deal. Dick and I, being used to the Gemini, just hand everything to Al and say, hold it. And he's got 25 things in his hand. Oh, Roger. I'm sorry I couldn't follow that S4B anymore, but it was really getting into the I think we're loading uh, Toronto here. I guess we're not going to see much Stuttering anyway a little anymore. bit as it uh, Roger, chugs Dick, on uh, that. We'd like to have you guys start a battery charge now. Okay, we're going to secure the TV. I think uh, uh, we're on battery B in the flight plan. That's affirmative. Okay, we're going to store the TV. Oops, I think uh, there's uh, only a few seconds lost on this gap. Apollo 12, Houston, uh, slingshot burn time is 4 plus 4, 8, and it's in attitude. Okay, 4 plus 4, 8. We'll, uh, have you got some uh, gimbal angles for us uh, that are, well, let me ask you, is it going to be in our window, the attitude we're in now or not? I kind of doubt it, Pete. You want to watch it go? No, no, we'll just stay put. We're getting hungry, and uh, I think we're going to start uh, getting out of these suits and, uh, uh, eat a little bit here. Roger. They've been in the pressure suits the whole time. Hey, Jerry, I'm uh, still not too happy with the way this uh, mission event timer is performing, even though we do have uh, the tuning fork uh, intermittently in the window. Uh, Roger, did. I guess we'll just have to keep an eye on it. Uh, right now, it seems to be performing okay, but we'll watch it. I'm not so sure that that doesn't get a glitch in it every now and then. Okay, Dick, and uh, if you're going to lean a lot more heavily on your uh, event timer, it, uh, you might give us time hacks every once in a while when you're using it. We'll set ours up and follow you down here and try to keep giving you the right kind of times. Okay, looks like the mission event timer in the LEV is keep it good time. Now, let me ask you, uh, it also, if it was a central timing problem, it would also show up with the pitchfork, right? That's affirmative. Okay. We've never seen a pitchfork in the LAV timer, and it stayed right in sync all the way along. So we just periodically call it 1665 and update the uh, the uh, mission timer. What happens is when a pitchfork comes on, it begins to gain time on us. It keeps getting five or six seconds ahead. Roger. I think the PAO will uh, tell us what the LEB is. It's the lower equipment bay. The LEB okay. is the lower equipment bay. 
the emission timer, event timer is, in that area is uh, working all right. The event timer on the uh, main display panel is not. There we go. All understood. Still following the 401 here? The uh, S-4B slingshot maneuver scheduled for 4 hours 48 minutes elapsed time. The present elapsed time is 4 hours 39 minutes. During this maneuver, the remaining liquid oxygen in the uh, propellant tanks of the S-4B is dumped through the engine bell. It does uh, provide a uh, small amount of energy. It will cause the S-4B to uh, go around the trailing edge of the moon and then into uh, a solar orbit. This maneuver ensures that the uh, S-4B uh, does not impact on the moon or have recontact with the Apollo 12 spacecraft. So the next city we should come up on, the next large city, is Mississauga. And that's just outside the Toronto, Tro, Toronto metropolitan area. Um, in fact, the international airport is closer Apollo to Mississauga. now at 4 hours 40 minutes is 16,273 nautical miles. Velocity 14,664 feet per second. Since the next plane I intend to use for a flight is the 737-800, um, we should probably swing by downtown Toronto in this so that Total we get a good look. Total vehicle weight now 97,157 pounds. The 737 isn't exactly going to be a sightseeing plane. I got the Harrier, uh, the one I used in the first flight, because I figured it'd be better for sightseeing. Okay, Houston, we started bad beat charge. Roger, 12. And still would be quick getting from place to place. It's a good deal, uh, VTOLs that uh, can still get close to Mach 1, but not, of course, in the case of the Harrier not quite break Mach 1. The F-35, of course, was another candidate. And I've got a freeware F-35A, but not an F-35B. The flight controller monitoring the electrical system reports the battery charge does look good. Gotta say the Kware F-35B didn't look particularly great, and I'll give it a second look. Uh, but ma mainly it was, I guess, trying to sell itself. Astronaut Buzz Aldrin has joined uh, Jerry Carr and Dave Scott at the Capcom console. On the capability and the fact that people really like the latest equipment, I suppose. I'm more of a vintage guy myself anyway. We're about 30 seconds away from the uh, liquid oxygen dump on the S-4B. And again, uh, I guess they do forget about the four fairings there technically following them at this point. I mean, the fairings were released with some impulse from the S-4B, but they're certainly closer to the orbit of the of Apollo 12 than the S-4B will be. 12, Houston, we've initiated the lock stump. Roger, we're lo we'll look for her to go by. Apollo 12, Houston. Go ahead, sir. Roger, Dick. Uh, we've been kind of thinking here a little bit, and uh, we'd like you to consider a proposal here. It's the idea of uh, getting into the LEM tonight before bedtime and uh, going through the uh, housekeeping portion of your checklist short of the communications and uh, powering up the uh, CMC and giving us a, uh, a check and an EMOD dump. 
Yeah, that's a good idea. We've been up here talking about what that launch may have done to the lab. And, uh, it seems like there are more trees. That, uh, between the two P-23s. What do you think of that? Than there ought to be with this autogen. Definitely do not. We're not going to do MCC-1, uh, Dick. It looks like you won't need it. So uh, you can do that during that time when you would normally be doing MCC-1. MCC is the correction maneuver. Okay, that sounds good. Uh, we really don't Make have course correction. To tonight, so we don't mind working late. Okay, it looks like about 11 hours. We'll work up a, a good uh, solid plan for you and uh, come up with it later. Okay, and uh, if, you, if that was a proposal, uh, you better watch the use of that language. We won't accept those sort of things. Roger. Should I have said this was a proposition for you? No, uh, you said proposal, sir. I, I guess there must be some distinction between proposal and proposition in mission parlance that I'm not aware of. Ah, uh, mission food. Roger, I'll be glad to hear that. So we can see Toronto downtown in view now. And I'll head towards it. I'm breaking away from the 401 now. And then we'll swing by that and then come around to the airport. I could land at the Toronto City Airport, but I've actually... Did you break out the jelly beans yet? ...blown into... Toronto Pearson, uh, not personally, I wasn't oh, piloting. Still reminiscing about that launch. But, uh, I, I've been a passenger landing at Toronto yeah, Pearson before, so. Yet. So, yeah. The well, reason why is because we lost all of our telemetry. Lost all your what? Telemetry. Oh, uh, he's asking why they had to do SCE to AUX. Way too many trees. Not that I don't like well, trees. Houston, uh, when you went under voltage there, you lost the SCE and we had to go to Ox in order to see what happened. But those trees are in the middle of a building right there. That's not right. It's like the trees are reclaiming the city or something. Which, you know, may happen someday, but... Not imminently. SCE is the signal conditioning equipment. The ground textures obviously have some clouds baked in there. At five hours, one minute, Apollo 12 is 18,827 nautical miles from Earth. Velocity 13,706 nautical miles. And the crew is uh, having a meal, eating some ham sandwiches. Hey, this is Mississauga. I assume when they say ham sandwiches, it must we'll be... We'll take this release circuit down for a while now and come back up if there's further air ground. This is Mission Control Houston. Five hours, one minute. It must be some substitute for a ham sandwich, because it must be crumbless, because, of course, on Gemini 3, they found out that uh, bringing up a sandwich isn't necessarily the most brilliant idea because all the crumbs and the smell tends to spread through the system because they're only at 5 psi instead of 14 any smell is like three times more powerful than it regularly would be this is apollo control at five hours five minutes we've had a brief bit of conversation with the apollo 12 crew we'll play that for you now oh, yeah. 12. Go 12. 
Roger, could you explain what's going on with our comm? We just lost you there. We had a little trouble. Roger, we just handed over a gold stone to uh, Ascension. Roger, now I understand. And what did you say about the SE to Ox this morning on that launch? Uh, Roger, the reason uh, what happened here is we lost the uh, that dude uh, when we went uh, low on that bus. And so we had to have you go to Ox in order to pick it up again. Houston, uh, the words are uh, almost all of your electrical parameters come down on that SCE, and uh, so when you go low on the bus like that and dump it, uh, about the only thing we could do is go to Ox and try to pick it up again. I guess this is the city center of Mississauga. Okay, I understand. Thank you, Jerry. We do have uh, somewhat lower frame rates as we render all these buildings and such. So it's a good thing we're in a slow plane. I can probably have that 3J FPS um, switch to auto and cut some of these buildings out. That'll smooth this things. Is control at that's what that's for. Seven minutes. We're back live now with air ground. Apollo 12 is 19,645 nautical miles from Earth. Velocity 13,443 feet per second. That's a free plug-in from the forums uh, 3J FPS. Handy. Lots of settings. Could have unintended consequences of course. Got a lot of plugins operating right now that could have. I've got X Vision and this also a reshade. Control. The word aux that you've heard uh, in the last few transmissions is A U X, stands for auxiliary. Not an actual aux pulling something, no. <laughs> Just in case it wasn't clear. Follow 12, Houston. Roger, if you'll give us uh, poo and accept, we'll fire up some uh, a new refs mat, a zero tronian bias, and a CMC clock update, or. Uh, Roger, it's all yours. Roger. Who and accept is probably my favorite uh, Apolloism. This is Apollo Control at five hours twenty-three minutes. Apollo 12's distance from Earth is 21,475 nautical miles. Velocity 12,883 feet per second. Sorry, this flight is actually going a little bit longer than I intended. And that's because we hey, we ended up a bit slower than I wanted. Go ahead, 12. I'm probably carrying too much fuel. Uh, Roger. Uh, Good as P-23 at uh, six hours. Uh, you gave me this um, well, this display ain't working anymore. But, uh, what the heck? Did I accidentally push something? Uh, Dick, you'll have a new reps mat at that time, and uh, your inertial attitude ought to be be that now. Once you put in your new reps mat, you ought to be that in good shape. That didn't help. Oh, very good, very good. I understand. I'm just behind you, I guess. That's the maneuver we were trying to save you. Well, good thing we have the analog stuff. 12 Houston, that computer's yours. No, I guess I don't have a okay. vertical speed indicator like and this. And if you can find time in your busy social schedule, I've got a P-37 pad for you. Hmm. Strange. Wonder why I lost uh, those displays. Okay, just stand by. We'll find a book. Okay, this Hold is on a LO sec. plus fifteen. Lift off plus fifteen. Sorry. Um, I wanted to see whether it was a failure. Systems. <laughs> Go ahead with that P thirty seven. Left flat, well, we knew that Roger the left flat had... Uh, so I guess it was uh, automated. It was one of these one five. failures, maybe. 
GET is zero one instruments zero zero four seven one four minus one six eight. No, it doesn't seem zero, to be zero five zero zero six. Over. Zero one five zero zero four seven one four minus one six eight zero five zero zero six. Roger out. What did I do to uh, cause this failure? Is that saying that the battery's off? That it can't, because the GPS wouldn't work in that case. For, uh, an abort at 15 hours after I'm not going to touch off. that. <laughs> Plane's working, don't touch anything. CN Tower. And downtown Toronto. All 12, Houston. All right, go ahead, Jerry. Uh, Raj, uh, what do you say we break the simulation down and debrief it now and the backup crew's ready to get in? I guess ground texture yeah, shadows, I mean ground power. scenery shadows is off. Hold on. Uh, now it says draw shadows on scenery. You can tell Sip Soup, that's a new one to work on. Roger. Uh, what about the shadows they cast? I think that's not happening right now. It's a good thing right? we never, uh, never seen it before because we sure didn't know what to do about it. Probably would take a lot of Oh, you did pretty effort. good. That's right. Absolutely nothing. It says it's on. Sim Soup is the simulation supervisor. Okay, now they're casting shadows. Go ahead, 12. Alright, you do have the uh, BTC rest net in now, is that correct? That's affirmative. On that last one, uh, Dick, we sent you a BTC rest mat, a zero trunnion bias, and a CMC clock update. Okay. an eye on the shadows. Anyway. Alright, whatever. Hey Houston, this is 12. We're gonna head into Toronto Pearson now. 12, Houston, go ahead. Yeah, Roger, Jerry. The reason I'm having trouble with this alignment, uh, first star was Canopus, so I got that okay in a second. Uh, the second star I picked in pick a pair is uh, Procyon, and I don't have anything in the sextant. Talk stand by, Dick. Astronaut Ed Gibson is the Capcom now. Well, this isn't helpful, but again, workable. Can't use the flaps. Tried to extend it, will extend only one, and that would be worse than the current situation. He just couldn't see it. Can see the airport. We're observing a weak signal down here. We'd like you to go ahead and track, uh, check the position of the track mode switch and also the beam width. We've been operating on Omni. Do you want to put a high gain down? That's negative 12.
the reflections on the cockpit window are a little bit distracting. At five hours, 50 minutes elapsed time, Apollo 12's distance from Earth is 24,561 nautical miles. Velocity is 12,062 feet per second. that you use uh, star 12 or star 15 for your second star. Okay. Just now you're looking at the disc. Affirmative 12. Houston, uh, you're looking at the torquing angles. We have them 12. Roger, torquing at this time, Mark. Hello, Houston, 12. 12, go ahead. Uh, Raj, how's the flight plan look for this first set of uh, B-20s? A bit shaky. Okay. Stand by, Nick. I guess at lower speeds, the flat problem is uh, more pronounced. 12, go ahead. There's no changes so far. Okay, we're going to do the verb first uh, maneuver, verb 49, to uh, get the boresight start. Roger. This is Apollo Control at five hours, 58 minutes. We're having a shift change in the Mission Control Center at this time. Uh, We're estimating the change sorry. of shift news conference to begin in approximately 15 minutes. Change of shift news conference in approximately 15 minutes. I'll have to check where the wind was at on this. This is Apollo Control Houston at uh, six hours, eight minutes, uh, now into the flight to Apollo 12. In Mission Control Center Houston, uh, we have uh, just completed a handover, change of shift. At this time, uh, Flight Director uh, Pete Frank and his orange team of flight controllers uh, now aboard. As we sit uh, here surveying the room, uh, the Apollo 12 spacecraft, uh, the uh, command module uh, Yankee Clipper, the lunar module Intrepid, uh, currently uh, 26,534 nautical miles above the Earth. We now read a velocity of 11,000. It was only 11 knots. Uh, feet per second. Spacecraft weight at this time uh, 97,157 pounds. The uh, atmosphere of the control center is somewhat uh, quieter than perhaps it was earlier in the day. Uh, Flight Director uh, Pete Frank at this time uh, talking specifically uh, to his ECOM who has just come aboard. And as was reported earlier, uh, Ed Gibson has uh, replaced uh, Jerry Carr in our Capcom position. No conversation uh, from the spacecraft for the past few minutes, but we'll stand by and continue to monitor it uh, six hours and uh, nine minutes into the flight. This is Apollo Control Houston. Okay, I'm gonna pause the audio there. We are six hours and nine minutes into the flight of Apollo 12. We have arrived at Toronto Pearson International Airport. Uh, a little bit rough on the gear, but uh, somewhat unavoidable. And so I'm just taxiing to wherever. So I'm gonna wrap it up here and say thank you for watching. Next flight will be from Toronto to New York with uh, Boeing 737 in Air Canada livery. And the lag around New York will probably be substantial, let's face it. Uh, I do have some custom scenery that was actually imported from Microsoft Flight Sim. So, yeah. Anyway, so thanks for watching, and I will see you next time.